Okay, welcome back everyone. DLH Performance. Uh, we got a, a crank here. Uh, it's a 40 millimeter stroke, 39.5 millimeter actually. Uh, Zeta crank. And what we're gonna do is just go through the process of um, balancing it. And I'll show you what I do to uh, balance one of these. Uh, later in the video, I'll show you uh, calculations on how to get your uh, balance factor and your percentage so what we're going to do here so this is what I do to start off with I take a set of calipers what I'll do is I'll just measure in between there measure in between those two holes and it's 19.90 so what I'll do is I'll just take that measurement and I'll divide it into two and I'll get 9.95 so basically what that is is half of the difference so what's that's going to do is just give me the center of here and I'm going to transfer uh, the mark here to my center so I know where to drill and I'm just going to keep it even at 9.95 over here for my other drill so then I'll mark that as well and to get the center mark what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll just measure the thickness of it is roughly uh, 1630 and half of that will be 18 or sorry 8.15 and that'll give me the center of here so I'll go ahead and set this at 8.15 and keeping my caliper on the inside of this groove here because it's a little hard with this round edge but it's easier with this edge. I'll take this and I'll just scribe it like that. Describe it and I'll just go over here and I'll scribe it there. Okay, so now it's hard to see those, but I, I can see them. Uh, there's slight scribe marks, so I'll know where to um, put my uh, marker. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance it with a marker. You can you can paint this if you want to. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll take the blue paint and paint it on there, but um, I can see it quite well. So, and um, um, if you want it like right dead on accurate, I mean, you could paint it with the machinist blue dye and uh, get a perfect scribe that stands right out. Or you can take a marker and you can mark it and do the same. But I can see it, so that's what I'm gonna do. So now, I'm going to set my caliper to 19.90. Okay. 19.95 millimeters. And I'm going to. Oops, sorry. What am I doing here? I need to do half of that, so I need 9.95. Sorry about that. And then 9.5. 9.95 is half the distance between these two. 9. Uh, roughly get it there. Nine four. Okay, that that'll work. And that is the half mark. So I'll just take it and hold my caliper inside the inside diameter there, and I'll just scribe it. I'll take this and I'll scribe it over here. So I get a mark there now. Mark there. And I'll take this and I'll scribe it there. So now I have an even number at the center of here and evenly on each side. Okay, so 
So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll I'll take my uh, sharpie and I'll take this, hold it into the light so I can see it, and I'll just mark this line that's going. Uh, that's the halfway mark in between. Okay. Okay, so that's my halfway, and I'm just going to make an X right here. I'll make an X right here, and I'll do the same here. All right. So now I got my center and my mark. So now once I've got that evenly spread out, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it into my milling machine and I'm going to clamp it down and I'm going to use a bit, uh, a starter bit. Uh, it's a really short shaft. You can use those on drill presses or a uh, uh, hand drill actually. They're, they're for starting uh, holes accurately and it starts a center hole and then when you uh, Put in a larger bit it doesn't want to wander it'll follow that hole all right so i just wanted to show you this, this is one of the starter bits um, for precision uh, drilling uh, these are really nice to have like i said you can use them in your drill press the milling machine or um, even even in a drill to help uh, wander wandering with your bit so uh the reason they don't wander is because the shank's short. Uh, you can also get short, stubby uh, drill bits. Um, they work too, so they don't wander. So I got one set up here in my mill. And I got my crank here. And what I did was I took a bit of shop towel and I just protected the bearing in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Place this into my mill here, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. All right. That just helps to keep it flat. Oops. As you tighten down the, the vise. Okay. So I got my crosshair there. And I'm going to move it in there and move this over and just get it lined up. So when I get it close, I just make a little spin like this and see where it is. Okay, there I know I'm center. All right. And I'll just put a little dot of um, wrap a tap on there and we're going to go ahead and drill it. gotten that drilled we're going to go ahead and uh, use a larger bit 
And what we're going to be using is a half inch uh, cobalt uh, drill bit, nice and sharp. And uh, we're going to drill out that hole. And I'm going to drill it um, almost all the way through uh, the crank until it's just about ready to come out, but not quite. And um, I'll give you a measurement on that. So basically I got my calipers here. Um, you can do this on a drill press by just measuring this, uh, how thick your, your, your disc is. It's a uh, 16.93. And what you can do on your drill press is set your spindle at the right amount of distance up here and with a lock and lock it and that'll lock in your distance of how you set it uh, on the mill here i can just uh, take my measurement at it's almost 17 16.9 16.85 millimeters and i'm going to reduce it down to about 14 and a half and that's going to leave me my drill bit about this far away from the bottom so it's not going to be quite through so I'm going to zero my mill and then we're going to drill down 14.5 millimeters. Like I said, if you're using a hand drill, you can tape off the bit and drill it into a vise. Um, it helps with the, the starter bit to keep your bit straight so it follows that hole and it doesn't wander on you. Um, and it's easier for starting. Uh, if you're using a drill press, um, you can use a starter bit and uh, lock it off. So the, the three methods would be taping your bit off to know how far you're drilling, uh, locking your drill press off, or in a, in a mill you just zero it. Um, I just push the bit down, I make a zero on my zero, and then I'm going to drill down uh, 14.5 millimeters All right And you want to take some rests so you don't overheat your bit. You want to take some rests so you don't overheat your bit and add a little bit more oil. Oops. So now I've drilled through uh, 14.5 millimeters and we can go ahead and uh, remove it now. 
So I'm just removing it out of the mill now after I've blown off all the particles. And as you can see, uh, it's nice and centered. Um, even though this is a milling machine and it helps a lot. I mean, you can, you can, um, uh, get the same results with a drill press. Like I said, uh, you can't stress more enough, uh, uh, shorter bits you can get like shorty bits. So they don't have side flex or, uh, also using a starter bit to start it with. And these things aren't that expensive to get at a local, uh, uh, tooling, uh, tooling shop for machinists. Well worth, uh, well worth their money. Looks great. Okay, so I have uh, two other marks here now. They're evenly spaced in between here and here. I'm going to go ahead and drill them in. So this started off as a half inch, and we're going to, I'm going to grab the other bit, and we're going to uh, um, set that one up. All right, uh, I've moved my, um, took it out the bit, and I'm going to put in this back into my chuck here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten it up. If I can find my keyway. Now we're just going to go ahead and do the same process set it up over the, or make my mark and uh, cut a small hole. My uh, drill bit in here I uh, switched out from the half inch in the center and I'm going to switch over to uh, 27 uh, 64 uh, drill bit and uh, what I did again was uh, drilled the pilot uh, starter hole and uh, we put this drill bit in and now what we're going to do is we're going to measure down and drill down a quarter of an inch now like I said you can go on a drill bit, you can use a tape measure, a tape method. Uh, we're wrapping tape around at a quarter of an inch. Um, you can um, you can use a marker on your bit to gauge it. You can use a drill bit uh, or drill press, a locking mechanism, or a milling machine. So, was, like I was saying, there's variable ways to get this measurement. So, a quarter inch is about. Uh, is uh, 6.35 millimeters um, so since I'm drilling in millimeters here um, also uh, I include the the point of the bit um, the chamfer of it is about three millimeters so I'm gonna go over and above three millimeters and that seems to get my measurement uh, when I do it on my um, uh, when I weigh the con rod and piston and it's bringing me about 60 uh, 55 to 60 percent is what I'm aiming for on this crank. So I'll just go ahead now. Uh, it's zeroed, and we're going to drill into it at um, adding the three millimeters to the 6.35, which is a quarter of an inch, will give me uh, 9.35 millimeters. I'm going to drill into it. All right, 
So there's our hole at uh, 2764. And we're just going to go ahead and drill this other one. Once this is all done, then we're going to flip it over, go to the other side and finish it off. And then we're going to put it into the uh, into the stand and we're going to make sure that the shafts are still true. So there's still a bit more to go, so we're just going to uh, plug along and and uh, finish it off. Okay, now that we've balanced our crank, um, we need to know the balance factor of it so we can uh, see what percentage it's at. And so we're going to need a stand with um, some metal rods so that it's a friction free uh, rolling. Uh, friction free rolling, so it's uh, free rolling. We're also going to need something to measure. Uh, in grams. We we'll also need the piston, ring, uh, everything that goes on top, the pin, the needle bearing, uh, the clips. That'll be our total weight and we need to know the conrod weight and the hang weight will be on the stand. Okay, so what we're going to do is turn this on and we're going to get our uh, con rod weight and we get uh, 36 between yeah 36 36 grams is our con rod so right down down 36 grams Now we need uh, the total weight. So like I said, we have our piston, our rings, our uh, pin, needle bearings, and our clips. And we'll add that to there. And we get uh, 140, 140 grams. And then we're gonna need our hang weight. Hang weight. So we'll take a, a hanger that we've made and we're gonna hang some weights on here. So what I'm gonna ultimately try to do is get the crank so it, uh, when it's sitting on here, to stay in any position. Right now, it's really heavy because we've taken out all this weight here. Uh, we want to, and it's heavy on this side, we want to even it, so we want to add all this weight back, is what we're doing, to the hang weight, so that it in any position. So we're pretty much zeroing out the crank like we've never drilled those holes. So I'm going to start off with a couple weights. Start off with this big bolt first and we're going to put it on the end here and hang it. Just like that. And we're going to move it and obviously it's still uh, too heavy on the bottom and still too light so we got to add this back in so we've got to continue to add more weight. So I'm going to add 
some of these bolts here. And put it on the end here. Like so. Put it back in our stand. And we'll see if we are right. It's close. But it still just wants to roll back. So we still need a little more weight. Okay. So that's pretty much balanced all the way around now because it stays in every position you put it in. So the weight that we put on the bottom, the hang weight, is uh, made up for all the material that we removed and the whole wheel is uh, balanced now. That's why it doesn't roll. Okay. So once we've got that, turn our scale back on. We'll take this and we'll weigh Okay, the hang weight with the, the wire the, and everything in total is uh, 48 grams. Okay, now that we got these numbers, the conrod is 36 grams, the total weight is 140 grams, and the hang weight is 48 grams. So what we're going to do is take the conrod, we'll just call it C, is 36 plus uh, the hang weight, call it H is uh, 48 grams and that uh, equals to uh, 36 plus uh, 48 equals 84 equals 84 and we're going to take 84 which is conrod plus equals 84 we're going to divide that by the total which is 140 grams will equal so 84 divided by 140 equals point zero point six and that equals 60%. So that's how we get um, our balance factor of our balance crank uh, is by removing material from here. So now if you want it to go say 50% uh, balance factor, you could say you could uh, uh, not take as much uh, of a half inch drill bit out of the center here leave the rest the same or you could say remove less of the material here will uh, lower your balance factor so um, say we drill just a little bit less here you could reduce it uh, to 50 percent or you could go to 40 percent or 20 percent um, if you wanted it at uh, 80 percent then you would need to remove more material so whatever you want uh, uh, for your crank, um, that's how you get your balance factor. And I hope this helps. All right, I, uh, after, after I finished drilling it, drilling it out and uh, getting it uh, balanced uh, for 60% uh, over rotational mass of the piston, I put it on my stand here and uh, you know I, I've already had it on here and I've adjusted it slightly um, it was uh, needed to be spread a little bit 
and uh, one side brought down a little bit and this is as close as I can get it and it's about half a thousand out either way and to me that's that's good enough um, if you play with it anymore uh, you're likely to be you know uh, chasing your tail so um, at half a thou I'm pretty happy with that on both sides so um, so that's what I do here at DLH performance uh, when I balance a crank um, I try to give my best quality of that I can and uh, give a really good product hopefully uh, this video uh, helps you do your own or uh, if you don't want to do your own you can always uh, purchase one off my website I also uh, want to bring up that uh, I do have a sticker draw going uh, you purchase one of my stickers and it gives you a free entry for a whole bunch of things uh, that I'm giving away uh, SAF super clutch uh, SAF force my new one um, I'm giving away a couple t-shirts, hoodies, uh, the completely built uh, Minarelli uh, engine. Um, lots of good things. Um, get in on the draw. And uh, that, uh, that'll that go till uh, spring, uh, the draw. So you got lots of time to get in on it.